I'm Dean Oliver, former assistant coach for the Washington Wizards and a statistical analyst for sports. I'm here to answer your questions from the internet. This is Sports Math Support. First up, at FWH1027, what is the most efficient shot in basketball? The most efficient shot in basketball is the layup. Any shot around the rim. Getting to the rim not only is a higher percentage shot, it will more likely get you to the foul line, which players make at about 75 to 80%. The second most important shot is any shot beyond the three-point arc. Anything out here. Shots out here are made at about 35%, but because of the extra point awarded for being beyond the arc, they are more efficient. At NBA ADED, statistically speaking, who is better, Jordan or LeBron? Frankly, Michael Jordan was probably a little bit better defender. LeBron is a little bit better passer than Michael Jordan was. LeBron adopted also the three-point shot a lot earlier than Michael Jordan did, but all in all, they are almost the same. At Womax asks, what studies do you do to become a sports statistician? That is a good question. This did not exist when I was a kid. Having a career where you get to do math in sports is a great innovation of the 21st century. That being said, it's not the easiest thing to get into anymore. In order to do it, you really need to know sports, for sure. Sometimes people forget that, but you also need to know things like programming with a language like Python. You need to know things about statistics, basic statistics, or a little bit more advanced that will only help you. Because this is an interdisciplinary job, you need to know how to communicate it. You need to know how to communicate math to sports people, and you need to know how to communicate sports to math people. From Raven's Realist, what is the most important quarterback stat? The longest one in existence is the passer rating. That one goes back 50 years. It is a very simple metric that just evaluates four categories of touchdowns, yards, completion percentage, and interceptions. It's not great. A better one is coming from ESPN, which is called QBR, which accounts for what is more important in modern NFL, which is the running quarterback, which is avoiding sacks. The traditional stat that people probably latch onto the most is quarterback completion percentage. Of the more traditional stats, completion percentage correlates the best with success, but it's still not as good as something like QBR. At Henri asks, bro, why are there so many no-hitters now? The bottom line for there being more no-hitters is that over the last 10 to 15 years, batting averages are down. There are multiple reasons for this. One of them is the shift. In baseball, they allowed a shift of fielders to go basically wherever you wanted to. When they studied the data, they knew that some players hit the ball in certain areas more. So if you put more fielders in that area, you get more outs. As of this season, 2023, the shift was made illegal to limit some of the ability of a defense to shut down a hitter. The other reason, probably, they manage pitchers differently. The pitchers don't go and throw a complete game nearly as much as they did. So you're seeing a lot more combined no hitters. 20 years ago, that wasn't happening nearly as much. It was all one pitcher doing the whole thing. When you have multiple pitchers, they come in, they're fresh, they have a better chance to shut down a hitter. Moving on. At Max Sports Studio asks, hypothetical, a player is fouled at the buzzer. He gets to shoot two free throws. His team is down by one. Is the probability that he makes the second shot affected by the outcome of the first free throw? First of all, the first free throw is usually much harder. Players haven't been able to dial in their depth perception. There's also this thought that their heartbeat is probably a little bit faster because the action is kind of calming down. Usually it's easier to make the ones after that. But in this situation where the pressure is on, players do react very differently under pressure. And there have been studies that have shown free throw shooters who are under pressure, they do shoot worse by five to 10%. At Kukui Online asks, does defense really win championships? In basketball in particular, what you see is that offense carries teams through the regular season. What happens when you get to the playoffs is the best teams know how to ramp up their defense. They are playing better offensive teams, but they know how to strategically defend those teams, take away the best players. That is the way in which you see defense winning championships. Defense doesn't win championships on its own. Next up, Quora user asks, how is Messi better than Ronaldo in stats? The best measure we have 
for soccer performance for individuals is goals. It is not the best thing that could be developed. But over the years that Messi and Ronaldo play, it is what we have. At Nikki Numbers asks, did you know that former Yankees shortstop Derek Jeter was a below average fielder? The numbers prove it. Derek Jeter was not as good as his reputation because some of the stats said that he gave up a lot of extra runs on top of what other shortstops would do. Won five gold gloves because when he got to a ball, he was pretty good at making the right throw, making the right read, but his ability to get to the ball was much more limited. His range was limited and that mattered a lot. At ktizzle 512 how exactly is an NFL spread calculated and what all goes into calculating the spread? There is a lot of mathematical calculation that goes into a spread, including what players are gonna be available, where the game is gonna be played, whether the weather is gonna matter, wind, rain, all of those sorts of things, who the refereeing crew is going to be. All of these things have tendencies for affecting the spread. That is how an initial line can be set. But what happens because the NFL has bet so much, a lot of the gambling houses, is they just try to split the pot. So at the end, they're just trying to make sure they have 50% of the people on one side of the line and 50% on the other side. At Elite Dog 3 asks, what is true shooting percentage? I've been hearing it, but what is the official way to calculate it? True shooting percentage is just total points scored by a player or a team divided by the shot attempts they've taken which is a combination of field goal attempts from the field and a fraction of their free throw attempts. It's more representative of the actual contribution of a player because it captures how many points a player is getting from their field goal attempts. So if they're shooting a lot from three, it's capturing that efficiency over someone who takes a lot of twos. And it's capturing their ability to get to the foul line, which can be enormous for players like Jimmy Butler or Giannis or LeBron. A. Miller 10 asks, when are stupid ass people going to realize that pitcher wins are a meaningless stat that shouldn't be used to decide anything? A pitcher win-loss record actually tells you something, which is winning and avoiding losing but it doesn't get at all the details very well for what a pitcher is doing. It doesn't get at their ability to throw strikes. It doesn't get at their ability to limit the opposing team's hitters. So it's missing important details, but it's getting at something important. At R-E-L-L-D-M-C, have running backs ever been less valued in NFL history? It is true right now that NFL running backs are being devalued, probably rightly so, whether they've gone past where they're getting devalued too much, I don't know. The reason they are getting devalued is because we're recognizing that the offensive line matters a lot in how many yards those running backs get. So the credit that those guys used to get as superstars, they're not getting quite as much of as they used to. So yes, they are getting devalued and probably rightly so. Moving on. At King DJ 5297 I'm supposed to believe that advanced stats work for the NBA. Yes, advanced stats work for the NBA probably better than other sports. For instance, there are team offensive ratings and team defensive ratings, which are how many points a team scores and allows per 100 possessions. That is a very accurate representation of how good an offense or a defense is. The NFL has maybe 14 drives for a team in a game. Baseball has maybe 40 at bats. In basketball, you have probably 80 possessions where you have the best players able to touch the ball and able to shoot the ball. So you get a very good representation of how good teams are. At Daw Black, you can measure nearly everything statistically. How do you statistically measure an offensive guard in football, I presume? In the NFL, we have an immense amount of data that tracks where all the players are on the field at every point in time, which direction they're facing and so forth. With all of this data now, you can actually measure how well offensive guards, for instance, block. How well can they win the block against a defensive player? Keeping that defensive player from getting either to a running back or to a quarterback. From IC at NOLA Legend, assists are the most overrated stats in basketball. When will people understand this? Assists in the NBI are probably given out too easily. They give them for very simple passes, but they also give them for more difficult passes. The players who get a lot of the easy assists are probably overrated, but the ones who have the passes for the alley-oops, for the layups, the ones in transition, those are very valuable. I wouldn't call them overrated as a stat, but I would say that some of the players who get 
assists are overrated. At RZN2BLV ask, did Bill James and Billy Bean change the game of baseball? Bill James did it by writing a book, multiple books, in fact, called The Baseball Abstracts, which got read by a lot of fans, and then eventually by people working in baseball, like the general manager of the Oakland A's, Billy Bean. The game of baseball, like a lot of sports, actually is about identifying the best players and how to put them in the best position to succeed. What they used is data to help make those decisions. A particular statistic that they recognized as undervalued was walks or on-base percentage. The fact that walks get you on base on top of getting a base hit is something that was not appreciated by traditional Major League Baseball. They did that behind the scenes and gained a, a major advantage. Next up, Reddit user 360 asks, what statistics are most important in the NBA? It's not things like points and rebounds and turnovers and assists. It is offensive rating and defensive rating, points a team scores and allows per 100 possessions. Beyond that, when you're trying to understand what a team is doing to be efficient on either side of the basketball, most important things are what are called the four factors. And the four factors are how well you shoot, which is an effective field goal percentage, which weights three-point shots more than two-point shots, a turnover percentage, an offensive rebounding percentage, and then how often you get to the line. Those four things will tell you why an offense or a defense is efficient. At vaguely artistic, if the triangle is such a simple shape, why can't anyone explain the triangle offense? I'm not going to explain the triangle offense here. I can tell you that. The triangle offense is successful only with a couple coaches, frankly. It's, it was successful with Phil Jackson, with the Bulls, and with the Lakers. You are creating good shots for good players and good shots for even average players who are there to set screens and just play off the ball. And what it does is it relies upon the strengths of the players themselves to make decisions. This is a good one. Ihoichi, is red zone efficiency a good efficiency stat? The red zone efficiency is how well an offense does within the last 20 yards of the field. Red zone efficiency is useful. It is uh, predictive to some degree, and it explains the success of teams, teams that are very good at it. They will be better offenses, and teams that are bad, they will be worse. But is it perfect? No, just like pretty much every other NFL statistic. Moving on. At It's a Cold World 26 asks, what's the most important stat for a receiver? Catches, if you're going to use very simple metrics, are the best representation of a receiver's ability. It is not the best metric when you start including the analytical stats. We have a lot better information on drops, for instance, for receivers, how difficult the catch is, where the ball was, whether they had to pull it in. There are better stats for that, but it's a complex series of them. There's not a simple metric at this point for overall wide receiver ability. That's all the questions we have for sports math. Till next time.